The Judicial Committee of the Privy Council, JCPC, is the court of final appeal for the UK overseas territories and Crown dependencies, and for those Commonwealth countries that have retained the appeal to Her Majesty in Council, or in the case of Republics, to the Judicial Committee. The Caribbean Court of Justice finds itself in the Treaty of Chagramas as the body with compulsory um, uh, and final jurisdiction in terms of interpreting our treaty and adjudicating on disputes between member states as well as between citizens and member states or the community on matters taken in regards to integration. I don't think we give enough credit to the framers of the revised treaty for having put in place a Caribbean Court of Justice. We've seen um, the, the court in, in recent times pass judgments on uh, two landmark judgments as far as integration is concerned on the, the case of Trinidad Cement Limited versus the Caribbean community. And uh, incidentally, I was hauled before that court to give uh, testimony in terms of the, Carib of the TCL's uh, contentions. And more recently, and one that has probably had a, a greater um, claim to fame is the Shanik Myri case. And the judgments handed down by, by the court has given us a certain measure of certainty. And the court has pronounced that the decisions taken by our organs of the community um, insofar as they confer rights and create obligations on member states as well as on the citizenry of the, of the community. Um, those, those decisions, uh, along with the treaty, constitute a body of community law. So we see, how, we, see we are delving into a Caribbean jurisprudence. The other aspect of the Caribbean Court of Justice, of course, is the appellate jurisdiction, which uh, member states um, are, are in the process of acceding to. I know there's a lot of debate going on as far as whether or not members should um, accede to the appellate jurisdiction. And um, debate is always healthy and it must continue at, at all levels. Much of that debate is taking place within the legal fraternity and at other levels. And I think we need to bring that debate down to the people. Because what I think we fail to recognize is that the Caribbean Court of Justice in its appellate jurisdiction is bringing justice um, to the people. No longer will you, those four member states who have acceded to the Caribbean Court of Justice, no longer do you have to travel to London um, to seek justice. Uh, the court is itinerant. In 1970, the Organization of Commonwealth Caribbean Bar Associations, OCCBA, first raised the issue of the need to replace the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council as the Apex Court. In that year, this idea was also proposed at the Heads of Government Conference of Caribbean Commonwealth Countries. However, for some, it has been a lifelong dream. Ever since I started studying law, um, way back in the 1960s, I had the vision that the Caribbean Court of Justice or something like it would um, exist to ensure that uh, the Caribbean people would have their own court as a final uh, court of appeal. Although this vision materialized, the establishment of the Caribbean Court of Justice came after a lengthy, demanding period of planning. As you would imagine, it had been something that had been talked about for quite a long time. But eventually it reached a stage in 1989 when the heads of government of the Caribbean community actually took the decision to establish it. And um, so the treaty which they entered into was actually signed in, in um, 2001, I think. That was the year when the first 10 member states signed on to the CCJ. And then eventually um, the other two CARICOM countries signed the, the treaty establishing the court. So the court was established by treaty agreement of all member states of CARICOM who committed to join the court and to ensure that it operated. And so the court has been functioning here and, uh, since its inauguration in 2005 as, a, as an important part of the whole CARICOM framework for establishing integration and um, providing improved access of justice to citizens within our region. And all Caribbean islands, incidentally, who have signed on to the treaty, including Trinidad and Tobago, are part of the court in the original jurisdiction. One of the popular misconceptions is that they have not joined the court. They have all joined the court. Because the, the court functions in two um, different types of ways. It's like two courts in one, so to speak. 
Uh, one important aspect of the court is its original jurisdiction. And what that means simply is that people can come directly to the court without going through any other court. Come directly, the people and states can come directly to the court um, to get us to uh, adjudicate if there's a dispute about the interpretation or the application of the Treaty of Chagaramas. Uh, everybody's part of that. Then there's the appellate court where the, we would replace the Privy Council. And the issue of abolishing appeals to the Privy Council has taken longer in some countries than in others. Countries which have delayed in adopting the CCJ as its final court of appeal have been discussing several issues. We are not independent when somebody else is making decisions for us. And therefore it's a simple argument that we're making. If we want to be independent, then we need to abolish appeals to the Privy Council and have our own final court. I prefer to use the argument of legitimacy. As, as an, a young nation, we have to have confidence in our legitimacy as a people. A Supreme Court, which is what the CCJ will be, that is to say your apex court that is going to make significant decisions that will have significant policy impact, has to be of the people. It has occurred in the United States of America, it has occurred in Canada, it has occurred in Australia, it has occurred in India, it has occurred in South Africa. The Supreme Court must be of the people. And if we interrupt that process, then we are not legitimate in our aspirations and our realization of our aspirations. For those who are opposed to the adoption of the CCJ, the question of confidence is at the heart of their skepticism. Some people say uh, that I have more confidence in British justice because the British are far away. They have no connection with, with um, Caribbean society. They are not under the influence of local politicians, and particularly in public law matters. Therefore, they can deliver judgments um, independently. Uh, well, again, following that argument is logical conclusion it would mean that the British judges cannot deliver independent justice for their own British people because they will be presumably subject to the influence of politicians there. And similarly for the Canadian court and the Australian court and the American court and wherever else you might look where they have their own final courts. So the question would obviously have to be asked, why do you think that we are incapable of producing a court that is independent. If we never have the confidence to make mistakes, if we never have the confidence to take the charge that when the mistakes are made, we will correct them, we'll never liberate ourselves. And that's my answer to the question of the perception of lack of confidence. I think that it is erroneous, and, but the responsibility is ours as lawyers and the judges who are able to speak to the publics to give confidence in how we behave, how we deliver ourselves as lawyers or in the judgments that we give to meet that question. In my opinion, the, the, the Privy Council has been serving our region for over 300 years and lots of people uh, take a, a long time to get used to the idea that the time has come to make a change. So I see the process has been evolutionary, evolving, and the process of evolution has, is well advanced. Uh, where four countries have already uh, established the Caribbean Court of Justice as its final appellate court. And I think it's a matter of time before the other countries join. The CCJ was intended to be an independent judicial body served by the highest quality judicial officers from throughout the region and beyond to protect the independence of the CCJ the Regional Judicial and Legal Services Commission was established I think that our judges are good I think that our judges are strong our judges are as good as any others quite frankly and, um, you know, we don't need to point, but if we needed to point, there would be so many examples of Caribbean judges who have done so well all around the world in different tribunals and are applauded for their quality. 
A unique feature among integrative courts is that the CCJ is funded through an independent Caribbean Court of Justice trust fund. Well, one of the things about the CCJ, uh, which is very, I think, um, perhaps uh, interesting that people don't know much about it, is that when it was being established, there were lots of discussions as to how could the institution be protected and guaranteed against political interference. And one of the areas in which special arrangements were, were implemented was in the financial arrangements for the court. Uh, it was felt that was important that the court would not, should not be dependent upon the annual subventions from governments, but would have an independent source of funding. Now, the innovative arrangement that was taken, and I, th I say innovative because I don't think there's any other court in the world that is funded like this. Um, the heads of government uh, had uh, uh, experts um, assess what capital sum would generate an income that would sustain the court in perpetuity. And um, they calculated that a figure of 100 million US dollars will, will, was that sum. And an independent uh, board of trustees was established uh, who manages a trust fund. And the court has been funded from the income from that sum from then until now. In keeping with its vision, in 2012, via regional consultation, the CCJ developed a five-year strategic plan. Sir Dennis Byron provides insight into other ways in which the court strives for excellence. We actually believe in the concept uh, that, that court excellence is not a state that courts reach but it is the, the, the practice of continuously improving the way we operate. So we expect that the best courts are those that are constantly in a process of self-appraisal, uh, making plans for improvement, evaluating how those plans operate and move forward. And that's a process in which we are constantly engaged here. So we have addressed issues to improve um, the use of technology to support the judiciary. We have tried to improve the issues of financial management. We have tried to improve issues of the human resource capacity of the court. Um, we, we have looked, we have improved the security services that we have had. We are, we are, we are, we are constantly challenging uh, the way we do things and trying to make them better. I think we have been very innovative in the way in which we have assisted uh, ordinary people to access the court uh, in a cost-effective and, and simple way. One of the things that we have been doing is to use the technology to facilitate people filing their cases. For example, people can file their cases before the court by email. It doesn't cost them anything just to send an email attachment. Um, we do much of our judicial work through video conferencing. So for example, if somebody is in, ba in Barbados or Belize or Guyana, or recently in a case we've had in uh, Tomlinson's case where the applicant was in Jamaica, they can stay at their home base and participate in their trial without having the expense of traveling to Trinidad for that purpose. So we do a lot of adjudication work through video conferencing and the use of other forms of technology. And I should mention that um, the official transcript of our proceedings is a digital record. And every day after the court sittings, uh, the transcripts are put on our website. So anyone can access our website and see the video recording, uh, the full video recording of the court proceedings before our court. So I think we also are proud of the uh, various elements of innovative utilization of technology that have supported the work of the court that we do. Apart from being innovative,
During the past 10 years, the CCJ has distinguished itself in contributing significantly to Caribbean jurisprudence. Well, we are most proud of the quality of the jurisprudence that the court has um, given. Um, the court has given a number of cases which have become internationally celebrated and have become precedents uh, within the region. The very well respected Dr. Lloyd Barnett of Jamaica has recently written and presented a paper, I think the date of it was the 23rd of March of this year, um, in which he has reviewed 10 years of jurisprudence of the Caribbean Court of Justice. It's a must read. Um, he looks at all of the significant cases and gives his opinion as an academic, because in addition to being a very successful practitioner lawyer, he's also an academic. Um, so if one were to look at that article, you would, you would see the, the judgments being reviewed. The, the, the ones that comes to mind most easily is the one I mentioned earlier, the Myrie um, case from Jamaica, which I think was a case which impacted the rights of Caribbean citizens across the board uh, for free movement within the region. And that, I think, has had a tremendous impact on the life within the, in the, in the Caribbean region. Another very important case that the, um, was the, a case coming out, of, coming out of Barbados, Boyce and Jones, which, uh, against the government of Barbados. Um, this is a case where the court established a number of important principles on the way in which the legitimate expectations of citizens have to be recognized by governments, even in cases where they were not supported by properly enacted legislation. And so that case has become a leading case, a leading case in the world. Forging ahead, the Caribbean Court of Justice continues to fulfill its mandate by living the vision. I see the CCJ as being a very important source of knowledge and learning um, in, in clarifying um, the issues of law and justice within our region and ensuring that we support the economic development and social stability with the quality of justice that we give.